can we do that tonight? Let's lift our hands and bring glory and honor to his precious name. Lord, we thank you tonight for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. God, you have been so good to us. And Father, we welcome you into this place tonight, Lord, to fill us with your love, to fill us with your spirit, Lord, through every song that is sung, through every word that's spoken. Lord, that it all be done to bring glory and honor to your name. Touch us, we pray, by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? He is worthy. We stand tonight for the reading of God's word. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, and I will be reading verse 1 through 11. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. Bible says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Tonight I want to preach to you on the subject, and I'm calling the title to this message, The Call to Repentance. The Call to Repentance. Would you pray with me one more time? Father, we come before your presence tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence that we have experienced in this place today. And Father, tonight as we study your word, let our minds be alert. Let our hearts be receptive as we receive from you the infallible, the inerrant, the ever-living seed of the Word of God, that our life may be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. The call to repentance, I believe, is a message that seems to be forgotten and lost in the modern church age that we are living in today. There are new congregations that are being established each week, and among these many mega churches and small churches that are being established, there are always programs and activities that are made available for every age. There are activities for children to help them have a good time. There's activities for young people. They, they want the church environment to seem exciting for those who are new. And today, with technology that's always advance, advancing, churches are now on the cutting edge edge of using that technology to expand their audience and to reach out to people literally all around this world. Even here at Howe Assembly of God, we have been able to utilize a technology in which we can make the gospel message more accessible to those who may not be able to come and attend services in person. And so we're able to broadcast our services on the internet. And anyone who has access to the internet is able to watch the service and and anyone who has a smart TV can subscribe to our church YouTube channel and watch church services on their television, services that go all the way back to uh, the early part of 2019. They are all made available on the Internet for people to watch. Uh, and today there are children's ministries that are utilizing technology in every way possible to make children's activities fun and exciting with music videos and with games and, and uh, speaking 
of which just yesterday I went into our kids' church auditorium and, and installed a new computer and, and redone the, the video projection system so we can give a better presentation of the gospel message to our children. Uh, many churches utilize light technology to give an exciting production to children so that church will be something that will hold their attention and, and be something that in a way for the young people would be entertaining and to prevent to, to prevail the message and present the message uh, to the younger generation and and when you're looking at the various ministries of the church youth ministry is much different than it was when I was growing up it's much different than it was when you were growing up because today we have different methods of ministry and, and different ways of, of, of getting the word out to let people know about the gospel message. Uh, there are social media platforms such as Facebook and TikTok and, and Pinterest and YouTube, and, and they are all used as ways of communicating to young people and, and a way to share ideas and common interest. And, and now we have the coffee shop culture that's made its way into church youth centers and into church entry halls uh, as another way to entice people's interest to get them to come into the house of the Lord. Uh, there are outreach ministries today that have utilized tools uh, such as free school supplies and grocery giveaways and, and giving out free meals in an effort uh, to compel people to come to the house of the Lord. Uh, and all of these programs and all of these outreach efforts have one purpose in ministry and that is to get people to church so they can hear the word of God. Uh, but I want you to hear me very carefully tonight how assembly uh, if, if all we are doing is catering to people's personal desires, uh, if all we are doing are meeting physical needs, uh, if all we are doing is sharing a common interest, uh, if all we are doing is growing a large crowd of people uh, who want to socialize and eat donuts and drink coffee on Sunday morning uh, and move to the beat of the music, uh, then it has all become nothing more than just a social gathering. Uh, there is one thing that is missing, uh, and this is a message of of repentance and holiness uh, that must be the center of our ministry we can have all of the activities uh, we can have all of the programs uh, we can have the bright lights we can have all of the frills uh, but we must have a message of the gospel uh, there must be a message of repentance and holiness uh, because his word declares uh, that without repentance uh, no man shall see the Lord uh, his word declares that we are to follow peace with all men uh, and holiness uh, without which no man shall shall see the Lord. If churches want to redesign the children's ministry center with bright colors and lights to make it more exciting for the children, great. Do it. Make it exciting. Make it fun. Design it for the children. If we want to have activities and games to play with our young people to make it fun, great. We need to bring the presentation to their level so they can understand it. Many of you know that I served as, as a children's pastor for many years working in children's ministry, and, and I had started an, an outreach church children's church literally from scratch I went out into downtown Fort Smith and we had a shade tree and a church van and I brought the church van up it had a battery pack on the side of the van and we plugged up a sound system and there under the shade tree across the street from an apartment complex we had church out there for the kids we started out with 17 kids and in just a few short years that had grown to a couple of hundred kids but we used whatever method we could. There was one year at Christmas, a lot of people at church thought I had lost my mind. We had put on a, a huge Christmas program for our kids' ministry. We had 300 kids that showed up that Saturday. Uh, we ended up having two services. We had so many kids in that building, we had converted an old uh, family dollar store, and that was our church building that we were using. And we had... Uh, two crowds that filled that building to capacity. But we had put together a, a large Christmas puppet program. We called it the Living Christmas Tree of Puppets. It was totally out of this world and very expensive to put on. And we had thousands of lights and we had a music, praise and worship music. These, this puppet choir was singing the gospel message. We had people dressed in, in costumes acting out the Christmas story. And, and while the music was going on, the drama was being presented. Uh, all of the lights were changing colors and flashing and moving to the beat of the music. It was just, it was an incredible experience 
hands and it held the kids' attention. And it was all done for one purpose because at the end of that program, we gave the altar call and many boys and girls and their moms and dads came to the altar and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. You see, I said all of that to say this tonight. If the world is going to utilize technology and bright colors to attract children and young people, and we know that that is taking place, we know that they are being attracted to a worldly message that is going to send them to hell, then how much more is it necessary that the church today, the church of Jesus Christ, utilizes an attractive way and an attractive method to present the gospel message while at the same time we do not change the message. We do not change the message. Methods change, and they do. From, from generation to generation, methods change, and they must. But the gospel message remains the same. If we want to paint the children's center with wild colors and turn the music up so the kids can't be unruly, if we want to have an exciting moment for the kids, we must, in the middle of it all, never neglect the most important message, the message of repentance and holiness. You know that I love children's ministry, and it's a very important part of my life. I believe that we must do everything we can to make the gospel message exciting to our children, but at the same time, we must teach them the message of repentance and holiness. We can have all of the activities. You can have the coffee before and after service, but unless the gospel message is being preached, unless there is a message of repentance, unless there is an altar call to repentance, then we're wasting our time and we're wasting our money. You see, repentance and holiness must be the center of everything that we do. Repentance and holiness must be the center of of our ministry. It must be the center of our activities. It must be the center of our youth and children's ministry. It must be the center of our music and our worship. If we have refreshments before and after church or not, whatever we do to bring people in, there must be the gospel message. There must be the message of repentance and holiness because his word declares in Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. What we see taking place in so many churches around our nation, and especially in our own fellowship, we have our rock bands, and we have our light shows. We have our inspirational pep talk speakers. We have our coffee shops and our social gatherings. But where is the message of repentance? Where is the message of holiness? Where is the altar call of salvation? You see, unless there is a change in people's hearts, uh, unless people answer the call to repentance, then all of our activities, uh, all of our programs is a waste of time and money. You see, there is a purpose of everything we do in the house of God. The reason for our music and our worship, the reason for our singing, the reason for our Sunday school teaching, the reason for our children's church, the reason for our youth ministry, the reason for our bus ministry, the reason for internet ministry and live stream is so that somebody will hear the gospel message, so that lives will be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that they would repent of their sins and follow Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of their life. In a lot of our church fellowships, and I mentioned to you earlier, I know this is going out on the internet, and I make no apology about what I'm saying. But if we're going to see revival in this Pentecostal fellowship, then we need to have revival at our leadership conference. We need to have revival at our district council. We need to have revival at our general council. But revival's not going to come if we never have a prayer meeting. Revival's not going to come if we don't have an altar service. Uh, revival's not going to come if we don't have some old-fashioned heaven sin, sin killing, devil chasing, Pentecostal preaching uh, that will cause people to repent uh, and get on their face before God and cry out and say, God, uh, we need revival in our church today. I'm tired of going to these conferences that have a 
rock band and strobe lights and fog and laser light shows uh, and somebody gets up there in their, their skinny jeans and their high top Reeboks uh, giving a, a pep talk and, and just encouraging everybody to keep doing what you're doing and then we turn the lights out and go back to, to the restaurant and to our hotels. Uh, it's time that we have church. Uh, it's time that we quit playing games uh, and allow the Holy Spirit uh, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us into the way of holiness once again. In the word of God, we see the call of repentance. John the Baptist was preaching and he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now is the time to repent for the coming. I believe the coming of, of Jesus Christ is very near. It doesn't take a genius to understand that we are seeing things take place in our world today that's much different than anything we have ever seen. We're seeing nation rising against nation more than ever before. We're seeing nations rising against themselves, against their own nation. We're even seeing division in our own nation, the United States. And when a kingdom divides against itself, it cannot stand for very long. Sooner or later, that nation will fall. Today, we are seeing society becoming more perverse than ever before. Men with men, women with women, men who think they are women, women who think they are men. Things that were prophesied thousands of years ago are taking place today before our very eyes. And it serves as a reminder that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The sad part about all of this is that it's not just taking place out in the world, but it's also taking place in churches as well. Church denominations are splitting on the subject of homosexuality and same-sex marriage. Things that were once preached against in our churches are now being accepted and promoted and, 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 and manipulated in our pulpits. And now there are churches that allow homosexuals into ministry. They are allowing those people who practice the lifestyle of abomination to speak behind our church pulpits. And they are allowing people of that perverse a lifestyle to teach your children how to live and to be counselors at church camp and to share rooms with our children. Church, we must take a stand for holiness. We must take a stand for the truth of God's word. And we must stand together in this day for our Pentecostal heritage of the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Because I believe there's going to come a time very soon if Jesus tarries. But it's only a matter of time before the doctrine of holiness becomes neglected in the Pentecostal churches, including within our own fellowship. And I want you to hear me closely. When that day comes, that's when this pastor turns in his Assemblies of God papers. Because we're going to have to make a decision to stand for the truth of God's word. We're going to have to declare the word of God and say, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We're not going to give in to the desires of this world. We're not going to compromise our Pentecostal standard. We're not going to give in to the temptations of this world. We're not going to cave in to the enemy. But we're going to hold true to the word of God. Where Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let the storms come. Let the enemy rage. Let the power of hell come against us all at once too. In the last day, there will be a remnant of people that are still standing strong for the Lord and enduring to the end. And they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. The same shall be saved. Today, people need to repent of their sins because if they do not repent, then they're going to be experiencing the judgment from God Almighty. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 through 32, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, 
that became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do them, but have pleasure in them that do them. What the Apostle Paul wrote so many years ago is taking place before our very eyes. And as a result, people need to repent of their sins and carnality while there is still yet time because Jesus Christ is coming very soon. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 through 30, Jesus said, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now is the time for people to repent because the way of the Lord has already been prepared. Just as John the Baptist preached the message of repentance in the wilderness to prepare the way for the first coming of Jesus Christ into this world, so must also the church continue to preach the message of repentance because the way is being prepared, I believe, to usher in the second return of Jesus Christ. There were prophecies that are being fulfilled in front of our very eyes this very day. It was prophesied 2,500 years ago that Israel would become a nation. We know that that happened in the year 1948. It was prophesied 2,500 years ago that the Jewish people would be gathered back to the nation of Israel. That has been happening since the signing of the Balfour Declaration in the year 1917. It was prophesied 2,500 years ago that Jerusalem would become the capital city of Israel. This was spoken at a time in which Israel did not exist, and Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. And, and, and when Israel sp split apart in the northern kingdom, their capital city was Samaria. The whole kingdom then went into exile, but Israel became a nation. In 1948, and Jerusalem became the capital in 1966 and 67. It has happened and it has been recognized even by our nation in the year 2018 when we moved our embassy to the city of Jerusalem. 2,000 years ago, Jesus said that this gospel message would be preached around the world, and then shall the end come. Today we are seeing the gospel message preached around this world. Uh, people are able to hear the gospel message even through television and through radio broadcast and through internet broadcast. Uh, and even as we have our services here tonight, uh, there are people around this nation and around this world uh, that are able to watch our services and, and be a part of what God is doing here in Howe, Oklahoma. 2,000 years ago, Jesus foretold of events, and I believe we are seeing these things take place today more than ever before. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3 through 14, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Let me stop right there for just a moment. We are seeing today nations rise up against nations like never before. In fact, I have seen the most tension take place between the nation of China and the United States and, and tension with North Korea and tension in the Middle East and including the nation of Russia. Jesus said in the last days that there would be famines. It's taking place before our eyes. In recent times, restaurants have had to close and they've had to shut down and, and, and limit their menu, not because of sickness and not because of a pandemic, but because of a shortage of food. And they are unable to serve cer certain foods any longer because they are becoming so scarce and they can no longer find the source that they need at an affordable price. And Jesus has this to say about it. In the next verse, he says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. In other words, if you think it's bad right now, then you haven't seen anything yet. He said it's only the beginning of sorrows. In other words, there's so much more still to come. He says in the next verse, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Church, I want to tell you this morning, and those who are watching online, if people fail to repent of their sins, if they fail to give their life over to Jesus Christ, they will not see heaven, but they will spend eternity in the lake of fire. I, I shared with you in the message this morning, they will wake up to the reality of a place called hell. Today, people must be made to know the urgency. We must compel people to come into the house of the Lord uh, while there is still time. Uh, Jesus Christ is coming very soon uh, and what we do for the kingdom of the Lord uh, we must do uh, very quickly. His coming is very soon. People must repent and we must proclaim this message of the gospel and praise his name before the very rocks of the earth begin to cry out. As John the Baptist was preaching his message of repentance in the wilderness of Judea he recognized that there would be some people who thought they had no need of John's message. They were people that were descended from Abraham and they thought they were already right with God just because they were descendants of Abraham. But I want you to understand something tonight, church. It doesn't make any difference who you are in society. We all need to repent. And if you could do your ancestral search, I'm sure somewhere down the line you're going to find out that you too may just be a descendant of Abraham. Because we all go back to the same place at the very beginning. But these were people in Jesus' day, they thought they were descendants of Abraham, that they were children of the promise of God, that, that they did not need any new message. But just because you think you may be somebody in society, you are still in need of a Savior. Even if no one else repents, uh, you still need to repent. Uh, if no one else wants to lift up the name of Jesus, uh, then you be the one uh, who lifts up the name of Jesus. Uh, because John said that if no one else would call unto God, if no one would praise his name, that God would still be able of the stones to raise up children under Abraham. What's he saying by that? Jesus explains this even further. There was a day in which Jesus was preaching to the people, and that some of the people were praising God, and people wanted them to, to be silenced. And Jesus said in Luke 19, verse 39 through 40, the Bible says, And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, 
the stones would immediately cry out. I don't know about you, but I don't want a rock to cry out of my place. I don't want some stone that's never known what it's like to experience the things of this world, that's never known what it's like to experience the grace of God. I don't want some dead, dry stone to cry out of my place. But he said, if no one praises his name, the very rocks are going to cry out. Is it no wonder today that all of the natural disasters and the earthquakes and the floods and the fires and so forth all serve as a reminder of the Word of God? Nature is crying out, so to speak, that Jesus Christ is soon to return and that people must repent while there is still time. How many more warnings does this world need to receive? How many more times do we need to be told? How many more times are people going to ignore the timeless message that we must repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Repentance is essential because the judgment of God is coming soon. All of the people, who do not repent and turn their life from their wicked ways are going to face the judgment of God himself. John said in verse 10, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. This is a very good example that John the Baptist is bringing out. He's comparing the people to being like a tree. In other words, some trees produce good fruit. Some trees produce no fruit at all. And if a fruit is not, if a tree is not producing fruit, then the tree is worthless. It has no value. And so the farmer, as he checks the orchard and he sees trees that are not producing fruit, he needs to replace it with one that is. And so he takes that worthless tree and cuts it down and throws it into the fire. You and I are just like the trees in God's orchard. And day after day, continually, Jesus is passing by the orchard. He's passing by the trees in his garden. And he's looking for that ripened fruit of the Holy Spirit in our trees and in our lives. He's searching for the fruits of righteousness, including souls that we may have won to the Lord. He's looking for some good works that we have done. He's looking for a change in our nature. He's looking for a change in our character, drawing near to Him. I wonder how many times He passes by our tree and He sees no fruit. I wonder how many times he passes by each one of us and he's grieved because there's no fruit and we're still dead in our sin. See, God knows the limitations of our flesh, but he also knows that there were no limitations upon our spirit and unless we place them there ourselves, The Bible still says that with God all things are possible to him that believes in every orchard, there comes a time when the owner of the orchard comes out and inspects the trees. And in regard to the trees that are not producing fruit, the gardener says it's time to cut the tree down and to get another one planted in its place because this one refuses to yield and bear fruit. Church, we cannot allow our life to become a tree that's worthless, a tree that's producing no fruit. We need to continue to be fruitful trees in the kingdom of God. Jesus came into this world. He lived a sinless life. He taught the way of righteousness. He taught the way of holiness. And we learn from his example and, and we intercede for one another. And, and this is the attitude that Jesus has for each one of us. This is the attitude that we need to have toward one another. There's going to come a time if we are not careful. And if we are not doing what God has called us to do, that he's going to remove that tree from his orchard. If we're not being a faithful witness, if we're not being a faithful servant, when we stand before the Lord, he's there, he has two things that he says. Well done, good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you. Nowhere does he say, well done, good person. Nowhere does he say, well done, churchgoer. Well done, good Christian. Well done, part-time believer. No. He says, well done, 
good and faithful servant. Faithful means you're always there. You're being faithful. You're committed. You're committed to the truth. You're committed to the calling. He's looking for somebody that's faithful. Even on a job, an employer wants somebody that's going to be faithful. He wants somebody that's going to be committed. He doesn't want somebody working in his business that's just going to show up when they feel like it. He doesn't want somebody working in his company that, that shows up part of the time and doesn't show up other times and never even calls in. But he's looking for somebody that's going to be committed. Likewise, in the kingdom of God, God is looking for some people in the church today that's going to be committed to him. He's looking for some people that's going to serve him with all of their heart, with all of their soul, with all of their mind. He's looking for people that's going to commit to him and yield their self to him, body, soul, and spirit, and be faithful unto him all the days of their life. There's a message this world needs to hear message of repentance that without repentance no man shall see the Lord and we as the children of God have a responsibility to declare this message to every generation to our young people to our children to our teenagers to your grandchildren to your sons to your daughters we must let our families and our neighbors and the people that we meet throughout the week let them know the urgency of the message of repentance. For Jesus Christ is coming soon. And just as John the Baptist preached over 2,000 years ago, he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Church, that's what we need to do in today's generation. We need to let this world know it's time to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Very soon, I believe, we're going to hear the trumpet of the Lord sound. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Without repentance, it's not going to happen. We must allow Jesus Christ to do a work in our life to change us from the inside out. And if we will commit our lives to following Him and serving Him all the days of our life, and if we will walk with Him, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That means you're going to walk with God. You're going to serve God. You're going to allow God to speak through you. You're going to allow God to work through you. And, and, and as you do so, God's going to minister to people that you meet and when you talk to these people you're going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you to them so their life can be changed by the power of the Holy Ghost and if you will allow the Holy Spirit to work in you through you and for you like that you'll never be the same in Jesus name can we stand together across the sanctuary and I want to make this altar call as broad as possible I just invite this whole church family to come forward and find you a place around this altar and shut yourself in with God. And let's make this our prayer. God, would you help me be a vessel for your glory? Help me to be a vessel for your honor. Help me to bear fruit in the kingdom of God. Help me to be a soul winner. Help me to be a, a witness of the gospel message uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, help me through the power of the Holy Spirit to become a disciple maker who makes disciple makers. Right now, can we come from all over the sanctuary? Find a place to pray. Shut yourself in with God and allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. Allow His anointing and power to equip you to do the work that God has called you to do. Lord Jesus, tonight we thank you for that power. We thank you, Jesus, for your anointing. Lord, your word says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Lord, tonight we call upon you. Father, that you would fill us one more time with your anointing. That you would fill us, Lord, with your power. Transform us, Lord, by the renewing power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would give us the words to speak. Lord, that your word, your knowledge, your truth.
would be spoken into our heart and through your voice, Lord, and the power of your spirit, God. Let your Holy Spirit speak through each one of us. Let your anointing and power work through each one of us, Jesus. Lord, so that lives would be changed, that people would be set free by the power of your spirit. Lord, as we pray for those who are sick in their body, Father, we pray for your healing touch from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, Jesus. Lord, anyone in this room tonight, anyone watching online through Facebook and YouTube who are sick in their body, Father, I pray right now your anointing, your power, your healing touch in the name of Jesus. For Lord, your word says you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your stripes we're healed. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for that power. Lord, as it was on the day of Pentecost, as it was in the days of the early church, Lord, so let it be today here in How, Oklahoma, Lord, uh, as we proclaim your word, Jesus, uh, let your power go forth with miracles, with signs, with wonders, Lord, uh, with the evidence, Lord, of your grace, with the evidence of your goodness, Jesus. For, Lord, in your name, all things are possible. In your name, there is power. In your name, there is healing. In your name, there is life. In your name, Jesus, there is hope for another generation to come to know you as Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus. And we bless your name, Jesus. For you are worthy. You alone are worthy, Jesus. Not by might, nor by power but by your spirit in Jesus name in Jesus name Lord touch every family I pray strengthen us Lord by the power of your spirit Lord have your way in our lives Jesus Lord in every area of ministry in children's ministry in youth ministry in our adult ministry Jesus in our internet ministry Lord in every area of this church Father we pray for your anointing and power to rest upon our hearts to be what you've called us to be in Jesus name in Jesus name we thank you Jesus Lord your word's not going to return back void but every promise will be fulfilled Lord your word endures your truth endures to all generations your mercy is everlasting Jesus we thank you Lord we thank you Jesus we give you praise, Jesus, for you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy of the praise. We bless your name tonight, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus.